introductions before we begin uh, the conversation. Obviously, I'm Graham. Uh, I recruit for Go Engineers all across Germany and Europe. Uh, I'm joined today by three fantastic panelists, joined by, by Oleg, Director of Engineering over at Smarto, uh, by Rami, uh, Brilliant Software Architecture Lead over at FinCompare, uh, and again, finally, last but not least, joined by Mario, uh, Delivery Architect over at Cubematic. Um, like I say, guys, thank you very much uh, for joining me today. Uh, very interesting topic, actually, all to do with uh, well, something that comes up quite common, obviously, in my, my line of work. I face this question every single day. Uh, essentially, is your hiring process effective in, in the current market? Now, uh, you guys probably will have noticed over the past year or so, there's been quite a high influx of uh, available candidates on the market, so to speak. One of the challenges my clients have uh, faced recently is kind of sifting through uh, that, that huge increase in talent and essentially getting the right guys into the team in the right amount of time. So that kind of leads me on to my, my first sort of topic, really, all to do with the, the technical assessment. Now, obviously, everyone's got a different um, process uh, around the technical assessment, uh, whether a technical assessment is necessary, etc., or indeed, should we have more of a conversation format? Um, that's my first question. I'll start with you, Oleg. Sorry to pick on you first, and we'll kind of go from there. Uh, do you feel that maybe a, a take-home technical assessment is necessary? Hi guys, hi everyone. Uh, okay, let's let me jump straight ahead to the yeah. answer. Uh, a generic answer from my side would be yes, the technical assessment is uh, should be a part of the interviewing process. But then we definitely need to understand how to approach this technical assessment because there is a lot of uh, um, different ways how uh, different types of companies um, do this technical assessment. And from my Let's say personal. I'll try to speak uh, not from uh, my company's name, but my personal experience uh, on the different markets for the time that I've been here and more than 10 years, maybe, maybe, even, maybe even more than 10 years. So I'll say that technical assessments should be aligned with the role and goal and the future um, expectations from the candidate. From one hand, it's great for the candidate. From the other hand, it is a little bit harder for the company because if you need to set up a day-to-day -day working hiring process, it'd be, it'd be hard to um, align every role and every position and every expectation uh, with the, what is there and what is the needs of the team. So. Uh, Try to summarize very shortly. Technical assessments, yes, it's needed, but uh, uh, it should be focused on what this uh, company and the team is uh, uh, looking forward in the candidate from one hand, but from the other hand, it's, there, is a, uh, there is a flywheel of hiring and we need to think about it as well. So uh, no, no easy answer. Uh, and that, that, that's why, Grammy, your job is so uh, hard in every market. Uh, I was going to say there never is, never seems to be a straightforward answer, uh, to be fair. Um, OK, so of course, we kind of established needs to be a technical assessment of such. Uh, do, do you feel that should be maybe like a take home uh, technical test that maybe lasts maybe a week or is this something maybe formulated in sort of a conversation? Um, or what do you guys think? I mean, um, from my perspective, we uh, we did I did it in various ways in the past, and the main problem is always like um, how do you treat people? I mean, there uh, when you when you talk to people, there are a lot of people that are afraid of kind of um, yeah test situations or like where they are afraid of tests, and they would perform they are performing worse if you give them like. Hey, and now you have to answer this questionnaire with technical questions uh, because it more seems like a like a test uh, to them. And uh, on the other hand, it's easy uh, it's easy for you to to figure out a little bit of the mindset of the people because we had a we had a questionnaire in the past, um, and half of the people that applied basically copy pasted uh, documentation answers into it. And uh, I mean. This is something that you can easily detect, right? Um, so I think that a technical assessment, like Oleg said, depends heavily on the role and should be should be focused on the role 
um, because if you just come up with some generic stuff that is not represented in the role or the, uh, the work that the per person must do um, is, is hard. And uh, in my opinion, it should be done while someone else is around, be it in a, in a, in a co in a pairing session together with someone, uh, which I personally like that you have like a co pairing session because there you can see what the person is capable or how their problem solving skill is present. Because for me, I don't, I don't care if how a, a while is written or something like this in any language or something like this. I want to see how people approach uh, problem solving and uh, finding solutions to problems. And this is the main focus from, from my side. Okay. Okay. So obviously more to do with uh, the situation at hand, essentially. I think on your feet, so our problem solving uh, okay. skills are essential. Um, okay. J just kind of rewinding slightly to what Oleg mentioned uh, to do with uh, obviously the candidate experience here. Obviously, from my point of view, kind of seeing a candidate through a process, I often find uh, one of the key things is how long it takes, essentially. Um, so Rami, going to fly over to you here in order to get a candidate through a process quickly, but also uh, assess their skills effectively. How would you propose uh, th this to be done? Uh, as Oleg mentioned, it depends on the seniority level, I believe. So if it is a junior level or a mid-level, then probably yes, I would go, but not for a test like, hey, here's this problem, please provide me a code. But as Mario mentioned, maybe a more in-depth session to allow them to go through how would they solve it if they would be writing code. So not even to let them write code, just explain in simple words, what would you do, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and me, myself, I've been writing code for 20 years. And whenever I, there's a company that's telling me, hey, welcome to our interview, we'd like you, et cetera, et cetera, but we need you to write a test for us. I've been doing this for 20 years. I don't have time for this. And for myself, when I was interviewing people and we had this question a lot in all companies I worked at, I was like, do we provide a technical assignment? I was like, maybe, yeah, for juniors, if you want to see how they write, what their style, how fast they learn, etc. But pff, GitHub is there and someone at some point have some code in it that we can look at. But for senior to ask a senior after the interview, hey, please write this piece of code. This is, I think, a little bit unprofessional or not nice to do in my point of view. Like, yeah, we want a senior. We know you're a senior, but you still need to, we need to test you as if you were a junior because of some unknown reasons. And as a developer, if I'm asked from a company to write code, my question would be, well, why would you need that? And if the answer is, yeah, we have, we want to see how you follow coding guidelines, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is again, not something that you would expect a senior developer not to have. So again, do you even want to mention that? Because senior developer as a developer who writes code is expected to have done a lot of coding styles, a lot of guidelines per language. Probably a lot of co companies even have their own guiding uh, guidelines for how to write code, et cetera, like some with new lines, some write stuff on the same line, et cetera. So a lot of things when you're talking about seniority level is if you have to ask a person to write code, you're not the right person to be interviewing him in the first place. That's my opinion. Interesting. I, I'd say personally, that's definitely an opinion uh, that I agree with. You probably wouldn't believe how many candidates, uh, superb candidates, by the way, that companies would be quite lucky to have, have simply kind of refused a, a job opportunity uh, because they've been required to do quite an extensive test. I, I'm wondering, is that something you guys have experienced also? Yeah, actually, I had an interview a couple of days ago and uh, I just refused to make the code. Sorry, I charge 250 euro per hour. I don't have three three hours to write something for you, <laughs> right? Exactly. No, no. no. Well, one thing I've actually noticed uh, recently is that com some companies um, actually offer to pay uh, for someone's time to uh, complete a, a technical challenge. W would that make you guys kind of reconsider doing a test or do you still feel um, maybe doing a test that isn't necessarily uh, something that's relevant? 
I wouldn't consider this, to be honest. I I and I would say no. This is this is it's still a waste of money and time for for everyone. Um, I also had an interview uh, some time ago with uh, with one of the of the big consulting firms, and this was to be honest horrible. They they had like they had like a list of questions, and you basically saw saw the interviewer just reading down the questions and making check marks, and it's like, come on, I mean it's an interview you should be you should not be so obvious that you have like a guideline provided to you to make check marks and ask standard questions because i basically answered the follow up question already in the first answer and then he just repeated the question over and over and to be honest this is embarrassing for the company uh, i see I, 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 yeah go ahead Alex. Not on the other side, but uh, throw a few mm, thoughts to you guys uh, in terms of uh, uh, like from the business perspective. So first of all, uh, uh, there is uh, interview process is, is the uh, process when two parties are trying to solve their own uh, their own tasks there. Yeah. And I'll say the, the first thing that you need to align is somehow your task intersects so do we really want to work for this company if it's just uh, uh, as a, a part of the bigger journey and this interview for you is let's say preparation or a way to assess yourself or to prepare for something else okay this is one goal or the second goal for you as a, a candidate this is one of the my dream jobs let's put it this way because i uh, like the company i like their mission vision the products and all of this stuff so the dream is, is supported by something that is more than let's say on this salary so this is already put you on a, to, a little bit on a different position and same from the company uh they should, uh, as a company, be very straightforward. I'll say, uh, first of all, describing you the full process. And if they say to you, okay, guys, uh, we know that maybe testing sometimes is frustrating, but we have this in our process as a part of the initial assessment. It's, it's just for us to do some preparation. Yeah, you're the best one. We're already... Uh, gave you, uh, we already want to start talking with you, but sometimes, even though we face uh, some candidates that totally uh, unprepared and test it show us. So basically be transparent why they need this, why this, you should go through this frustration because this, yeah, you're professional, but we need this. And after test, you will have a technical assessment. Yeah, we will write code. This will be this one. And I really like the idea uh, that Graeme just said that for some technical assessments, companies are ready to pay by hour. That's, that's a good one. So even though that we're spending our time hunting for a dream job, but they're saying, guys, we value your time, not only by giving you an opportunity to talk with us, but actually <laughs> paying you. So uh, I'll say that uh, 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 this is the ideal uh, process for me when uh, two, uh, expectations are aligned, met in this room, and they're talking with each other, right, building up the relationship. So we didn't swipe each other in twin Tinder. Yeah, we, I like this and you like me. Okay, guys, let's go for the five minute talk. That was brilliant. Let's go for the uh, uh, full night discussion about cycles. That's also, and so on, so on. like building step by step. I, I, I kind of agree, um, but the point where I would disagree is um, that the candidate needs to be flexible, right? So from the from from this pers uh, per, uh, side of, of, of uh, how you described it, the, the candidate basically needs to be flexible. Um, and my critic point there is that also companies should adopt to the candidate because, as you said, it's a it's a it's a two way route and yeah I can understand I mean they are enterprise companies and they have like their 
there are nice processes in place and they are very happy with those processes. Um, but uh, it's, it also tells you something about the company as a candidate. If, if they are not flexible to adopt to you or to your personality or how, how the first talks went, then the, this might also be a not, not so good, um, uh, so, not so good part of the, of the company, right? And that's totally okay. So for yeah. you as a candidate, if you see this like so-called flags, like yellow flag, yeah. you can even, okay, guys, look, I've, I've expected differently, even though that you are my dream job. But if you have those things in your established process, if you approach me like a, I'm a robot, uh, I think I will not go with you with the next steps. Okay, I'm just wondering, is, is there a danger then in that scenario? Obviously, we all know it's a kind of candidate driven market. There's obviously a shortage on, on the market. Um, is there a danger that you miss out on maybe uh, a desirable talent or someone that's really crucial to your team because you, you're not willing to be flexible in, in the, the process? I'm curious what you would think there. If you're hunting for the talents, yes, you will miss it. That, that's my opinion. Okay, is that something you're willing willing to do? Kind of miss out on maybe the right guy by, by sticking by the process, or would there be any flexibility there? Do you think? I can go, guys. But uh, uh, if you have any thoughts, I, 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 uh, I so, uh, from from my perspective, I would uh, I would adopt uh, to the candidate. So um, I mean. It's it's always it's always a conversation, right? It's it's not uh, we tell you or you tell us. Uh, from a company perspective, um, if I'm really interested in the candidate based on the experience, or because the person was recommended to our, uh, to us or came in via a, via a colleague, um, I would always adapt. And as far as I know, uh, or how we did it in the past, we we always adapt. Adapted to the pros, uh, the uh, to the uh, to the candidate. Uh, if if the potential was good enough to get a real talent in there. Okay, okay, I see. G going back to what Oleg said, I think it's a extremely cu crucial point. I think sometimes is uh, kind of missed. Uh, I think sometimes we focus on the interview processes purely assessing. Uh, the candidate Oleg mentioned is similar to kind of matching on Tinder or something, kind of seeing both both guys are a match. Um, now I'm curious, how, how would you kind of almost, um, yes, not sell to the candidate, but how would you guys go about, um, yeah, selling the opportunity to the candidate, um, letting them interview you, I suppose. How would you guys go about that? I think the most important part is to make the process as short as possible. Uh, I've lost a lot of candidates in every, almost every company I worked at just because people who needed to do the interview did not have pre-booked time for interviews. So they were fully booked on their day-to-day -day jobs, for example, CEO, CDO, your, your manager, you as a team lead or one of your developers if you want, if he needs to be in the team uh, in the interview. And they did not have like pre-allocated time for it and all of their days were fully booked on the calendar. So it took like First interview with the HR took one, two weeks because all HR capacity was full. And then the second interview was with team leads, etc. took one another week for the candidate to wait. And then you decide, oh, we need to get the team on board. Maybe one of the front end developers, if you're hiring a front end developer and you don't have front end experience to ask the right questions, etc. So to be prepared to already have pre allocated slots for candidates uh, that could be swapped, like if we don't have candidates, okay, guys, your time. Do whatever you want with it to your rest of the jobs etc but hey we have from week one to week 10 uh, please book one hour per day from that time to that time for interviews for example that would help speed things a little bit more and um, yeah i still have some interviews because i'm currently looking for a job and one of my interviews is in two weeks like um, who knows maybe in two weeks i would already be hired by another company right so it's yeah. things like this that yeah. I, I was just about to say, to be fair, in, in my experience, I find that the, the typical time uh, someone's on the market, obviously it, it flexes, uh, typical time someone's on the market looking for a job is uh, roughly 10 working days. So it moves incredibly quickly. Obviously that changes depending on the role, etc. Uh, but but you get the, the overall picture. Uh, now that leads me on to my, my next question. You mentioned the most important thing would be the process uh, moving as quick as possible, being as short as possible. Um, so, so how long would you say the most ideal uh, process 
uh, should be, I suppose. Not long that I forgot that I already talked with HR. Some cases were like this. <laughs> I don't know, maybe one, two weeks if there are a lot of steps. Depends on the position, but I think if you're hiring juniors, you should like HR, team leader, project manager, and don't hire or no hire. That decision should be that hard. And uh, for more like leadership roles, you need like maybe three calls, HR of course, and then uh, with their manager and with uh, with the peers. So it depends on the role, but not more than two, three days in between calls. Otherwise, the change just or, or the, the tunnel vision on that job opportunity will be widened and the, the participant or the applicant won't be as um, invested or as glued to 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 the company as you might have imagined yeah i certainly agree i also find by the way that moving through a process quickly also increases the amount of uh, interest that the candidate sort of perceives in, in themselves uh, i'm not sure if you guys have experienced that previous but it's definitely something i i have i have noticed uh now oleg i'm keen to hear hear your thoughts you look deep in thought uh there so yeah we'd be keen to hear what you were thinking um... I was calculating in my mind while Remy was talking, uh, and I come up with the date one month. And my justification for this date is uh, uh, I'll try to put myself in the candidate position, and let's assume I'm I'm there on the market and just I just started the process. My previous job is ended. I have some funds, and uh, uh, one month. So that means that something is. I'm putting in the worst case scenario, yeah? I'm the candidate that just have funds for the, uh, from their previous jobs paid to them. And this builds up the, the timing in my head. Okay, one month is, is max. Because after one month, the candidate in this worst case scenario situation is stressed not only by interview, is stressed by other life things that happening with them because he's without job right now. and mind is starting to go uh, total different directions. And you need to be a, a very strong person to uh, be very focused on the process uh, if there is so much struggles behind your, uh, or on, on your shoulders because of that. that. That's why I'm thinking about one month max. Um, so from my side, um, I, I agree with, with, uh, with Ami. Um, I think it depends on the role. Uh, it depends on the uh, the role that where you're getting into. Um, I think the most important topic is uh, not that you have like after three days there need to be the next call or something like this. Because let's be honest, if if you're not in the in the in the stress position, I need a job in one month. Uh, if you're like, hey, I I need a job eventually or something like this, um, then um, I would just have a constant um, interest. So for example, a nice interview process that I experienced myself was um, I had an interview with the tech for with the tech team leads. Then I had an interview with the CEO, then I had this interview with the CTO. And there were always like some time in between because it's hard to match timings when you're still working and when uh, when you uh, the CTO and the CEO, like Ami mentioned, it's hard to, to fill those calendar slots. Uh, to find those calendar slots and um but what they did was they the hr followed up after each call and uh got into the into like a a five minute phone call or 10 minute phone call hey how was the interview from your side is there anything open can we clarify anything like um the hr person really invested time into also the nurturing of the candidate and uh, this interview process stretched for over one month um, because timings and stuff like this and vacation time and so on and uh, i didn't feel bad about it because i was always engaged um, but i agree with oleg if you're um, if you have to get a new job because otherwise you get into financial issues or something like this um, this should be clarified also in the hiring process so that that you can say like, hey, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I can join really quickly because this is also a benefit. Let's be honest. I mean, there are, there are times where you have half a year until someone can can join a company, and uh, joining in one month is a real benefit for a lot of companies. 
and then um, the hiring process should again adopt to it like then it, they should move forward to not have a stressed person uh, because they don't perform on level that they would usually perform I see. I, I gather from from kind of all the points that you guys made, the sort of key thing we have so far is kind of transparency uh, between obviously the company and the um, yes. the engineer. That's definitely one thing I find lacks sometimes. Be it through calendars being extremely busy. Um, listen, I'm I'm sure we're all guilty of it. Things get really busy. Things get away from us, etc. Um, but yeah, I, I think transparency is extremely clear. Uh, now I'm wondering, do you guys have? In your I'm own... sorry. May, yeah, may sure. Go ahead. Only one word. Also putting a commitment, time commitment by the company saying, guys, this process will last no more than months. This is transparency and commitment. And yeah. you feel comfortable. And and this is like a green flag. OK, those guys know what they want, even in, in the recruiting process. That means that maybe they know what they want to build. And I really don't need to struggle afterwards when I be there inside trying to find the work. So transparency and commitment, because we are as candidates, we are committing our time with them. We're mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, um, not uh, uh, answering others uh, on other positions because yeah. there is something there. And so, yeah, so th that's what I wanted to add. Okay, no, no, I definitely agree. I think that goes back to what Rami mentioned also, uh, that commitment to kind of pre-allocated uh, interview slots and things, uh, having that transparency between the company and the, the candidate, uh, and also having that kind of booked in commitment uh, ready to go, uh, always uh, an extremely positive sign, uh, I suppose. Um, now, Mom, one thing I did want to, to, to kind of ask, say, for example, you've reached the end of the process, uh, be it three, four, five stages, however long, uh, you have that final call with the, the final stakeholder, etc. Uh, I'm wondering what when would you guys expect to make the candidate an offer? Would it be something done sort of in person, or would you say maybe take it a week or so? Or what would be your thoughts there? I think everyone already has something in mind for what the company would offer and what the candidate is looking for. And after the final interview, if all showed thumbs up for the candidate, then I think the person responsible for the budget should have a call with that candidate candidate and get to a deal with him and sign a contract and that's it why to uh, wait more yeah that's the question yeah i, I, I certainly agree 100 percent agree you, you wouldn't believe actually how many um yeah kind of um candidates kind of fall through and miss out on the, the job they were hoping for uh simply due to sort of delay and stuff uh, i think that goes back to the uh the commitment that was mentioned a moment ago i think it's a very uh yeah powerful word um Okay, brilliant. So, so far we've got a pretty running theme, I think. Transparency, commitment being clear. Um, now, one thing I, I was hoping to ask, you kind of touched on it briefly. Um, how do you keep candidates engaged through the process? Is it simply um, doing things really quickly, back to back, or, or is it more similar to what Mario mentioned? Uh, we kind of keep uh, maybe a follow-up call, etc. What kind of tools would you guys choose to implement? I'm curious. The nicest interviews I had was with the last company I worked at, and uh, it was a total of five hours of interviews, I think, maybe even more, I don't remember, and it was like really rapid fire, uh, so two or three interviews per day with different team members, etc. You would think it's a lot, but I felt that was really nice, actually. And the nicest thing about it, after every call, I either got an email, like a personalized email written by HAD, not one of those automated emails that you usually get from the HR, uh, giving me feedback directly if she had a talk with the uh, with the interviewees back then, and preparing me for what's going to come next. Because when you have a lot of interviews with a lot of people, you need to at least to know what, what questions you could or you couldn't ask for the people that might come because they might be technical, they might be non-technical, they're coming from product or maybe QA, et cetera. So she was really well preparing me for, hey, you're gonna talk with this and that and that person. And those are the experiences. This is what you would expect from them. So prepare yourself, et cetera. So you would go into the next interview already knowing what's going on knowing what the people are about, knowing what the topic's going to be about. And that felt a little bit more, less stressful for me as a candidate back then. And uh, I would love to see that actually more often. Sadly, that's not the case. 
at least of all companies. Yeah, certainly. So certainly something I've noticed, by the way, where that communication isn't always there, which is obviously obviously a shame. So, OK, obviously having that communication uh, after each stage. Um, yeah, OK, brilliant. I think that makes perfect sense. Um, now, Oleg, you seem to obviously ha had something to say a moment ago. Uh, sorry if I interrupted you. No, no, I was uh, nothing for what Ram is saying. Uh, I, I wanted to put uh, more flavors on what he proposed. Uh, the feedback part. Yeah. I'll say this: if if companies will actually start to provide the feedback, or regardless of the type, positive, negative, any kind, this will definitely uh, uh, make a process more engageable for the candidate because. Even if you are not getting hired for the position, you still have some outcome from this time investment. <clears throat> if you get honest, uh, very straightforward, again, the, the transparency it is the right word that could be a, like a refrain from uh, for our talk. Uh, answer why on the question why we we are not there together, and, and not the automatic replies that Rami was mentioning, but actual human written, uh, honest words. Here we observed lack of this. Here we wanted to, to have more engagement and you didn't show the engagement. And what we meant by engagement is doing this, this and that. And you did that and that. It, it's all, it's already gives you uh, valuable insights on yourself that you can reflect on and become a stronger professional, even with negative uh, uh, outcome, the generic general outcome. Yeah, 100%. I think the feedback uh, given to the candidates is something that, um, yeah, sadly kind of lacks, as I mentioned a moment ago. But having that, that closure on the process, having that result, be it positive or negative, um, yeah, it could give you some direction um, so that for, for the future. Um, now, the, the final thing I wanted to mention really to kind of wrap us up. Um, now, giving feedback to the, the candidate is obviously something that is, um, yeah, obviously crucially important. I'm wondering, do you guys often receive feedback from the candidate about your interview processes, about things you can change, uh, or is, uh, yeah, what would be, uh, what would happen there? I, I think we got in two, in two interviews that I had with a candidate, I actually got feedback and that's it. And it, I can't count the number of candidates that I interviewed. So uh, the, the, the feedback is really, really, um, it's really hard to get. Even if you ask, um, it's, it's hard to get, but um, I would love to get more feedback from candidates, to be honest. Um, but so far, I didn't figure out a, a trigger point, what you can do that you can actually get some, some feedback. Uh, but I think this is, this would be really beneficial uh, especially for the company uh, to improve on their hiring process and for the future. I'd add to Mario or maybe answer Mario's question, which is how to get feedback from the candidate. I did it myself and I don't remember how many years ago, but when you send a feedback to your candidate, like, hey, I, I asked this, 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 I expected this, this, that, but you did this, 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 it would be better for you if you do that any type of feedback that is constructive for them, you usually get a feedback. And the most feedback I got is that uh, there was a lot of miscommunication with the, the way technical questions are. This is the most often or the most uh, repeated feedback I got, uh, either in, from my side directly or from my peers who were interviewing in the process as well. And like you said, this led us to rethink on type of questions, type of answers that we could ex expect or accept. And actually one feedback was we completely misunderstood how the candidate replied to us. Um, I would blame heavy accent on that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we, we got him into another call and he was actually hard and he was way much better than the other candidates that they, they had. I, I remember this vividly, although it was years ago. So 
important to get feedback, as Mario said, but to get one, you have to provide one because often your candidates don't know your personal email or where they can support, uh, provide that. It goes to the HR and to the trash bin in their email inbox usually. Okay, uh, I think you've answered my, my next question to be fair. I was going to ask what sort of uh, tools or mechanisms would you put into place to get that feedback? Uh, but I think obviously by by providing feedback is a two way street, right? Providing that, that feedback obviously encourages it uh, in return. Um, now, but between us, I, I think we've cracked it to be fair. We've cracked how to make a process um, ideal. Um, so to summarize, obviously having great transparency and commitment uh, from, from both sides. Uh, obviously keeps the process going smoothly and having that commitment in terms of maybe pre-allocated slots, uh, commitment on, on time scale, uh, as Oleg mentioned, um, obviously increases engagement overall. Um, now, the final thing that Mario mentioned was obviously kind of communication, increasing that preparation before each stage, uh, again, to, to, to increase engagement on the process. Uh, finally, uh, I think feedback, something that may or may, may typically go, go amiss. Um, yeah, as Rami mentioned, kind of save that, save that interview uh, at the last stage. Um, so between us, I think we, we may have cracked it, to be fair. Um, now I'm wondering, do you guys have any kind of closing statements or, or do you think we've covered everything? I think no matter how much you could improve a process, how much how good you are at collecting feedback or giving it, if you don't have the time to do it, you won't do it. And that's the most issue is time. Usually if your calendar is packed, just don't do, don't do interviews. <laughs> Yeah, there we if, go. If, if your calendar is packed, uh, maybe deprioritize things that are less important uh, because maybe the fifth daily stand up and the t second weekly can be skipped uh, for a good candidate that brings your company forward. Nothing to add, guys. Perfect. It seems to be some some general agreements there on skipping that, that fifth standard of the day. Um, but OK, guys, pleasure, uh, as always, kind of speaking with you. Uh, I appreciate some, some of us have some, some hard stops coming up, so uh, I'll hit stop recording. Obviously, you can find the recording on our YouTube channel once I get in touch with our marketing team. Uh, but obviously, thank you very much for your time. Uh, super appreciated. Uh, yeah, uh, until next time. Thank you, everyone. Bye, Perfect. Bye-bye.